Frank says, with Microsoft's announcement that they're shutting down the business-focused free version of Teams and pushing people to upgrade to keep their data or move to the new personal version of Teams free, what are the options for migrating to the personal free version? Is there a path for data or is it a manual process? How about Ooh. neither? <laughs> <laughs> There's Whoa. no, there's no automated path, and there's no migration path in between that. Uh, yeah, so no, it, yes, it is manual. Yeah, and there's third party that goes from the free to the paid version, but to kind of go over to the free. And is the free version? Are they talking about a community tenant? Are they talking about a, you know, just the consumer free? The, I think they're talking free? about just the chat. You know, the the, the new community-based, the free version of Teams that's out there, yeah, which is more about kind of chat thinking. and personal meetings. Yeah. Mm. Which, by mm -hmm. the way, also has to have a personal um, email. You cannot use a business email or you can't use a work or school email. You can only use a personal email for the community version of Teams just to make it a little more confusing. Yeah. To make it even more confusing, if you try, if you automate, if you log out of your business version of Teams, the fact that it then defaults <laughs> to then that free version of Teams, which is a different product, and I don't want it to default and turn it over there because I'm shutting one down. It means I'm logging into for some reason because the multi-tenant doesn't always work. <laughs> no, no, that's the directions, Christian. The directions to log into the personal is to log out of the business, and then that logs you into the personal. Really? Is that is that the way it's supposed to work? <laughs> I just figured it was some something was off. Because if I'm logging out of that, I would assume I'm in the business version. I want to then log into a different business account. Not I mean, the only, the only way I did it recently for someone that has sort of community tenant was it was all manual it was syncing everything down to the desktop with OneDrive sort of you know business and outlook for example backing it up as a pst you know that whole archiving kind of folder um then having the new one set up and then manually copying all the files over from one version of the OneDrive to the other as long as it's not too free personal you know, if it's too personal, then you can't have too personal logged in with OneDrive personal. You can only in the consumer side. So you have to have, I mean, if it is a business and using OneDrive for business, and it's all a manual process to bring everything over, but only so much of it that you can actually bring over ultimately. Depends on what you've created in the business free. Because the personal side doesn't have, like if you were using anything like, you know, some of the things like lists and planner and all that, like what, how in depth have you gone on the business free even to then be able to pull that data over because you do have limited features in the <clears throat> in the personal side in terms of what, you, what are you trying to bring over and are, are you going to get like for like how much data are you going to lose in the long run? Well, that's why I said it really is, you know, neither of Frank's options that he outlines that if if you want those other features from the business free, the old version of the free, then uh, you need to upgrade to the paid version. Yeah. All, you know, full stop. Then there's the new Teams free, which is more about chat, which you can't use your business accounts, emails for that. There is no migration path over to that. You need to go set up with your Hotmail, Gmail, whatever mm -hmm. other, mm -hmm. your Yahoo, your AOL account <laughs> set up that way. Yeah, which I mean, if you've got business, you don't want to be using your personal, you know, emails, you right. know, you know, or you're generating a whole new one. And then you've got to advise all of your, you know, if it is a business, then you've got to advise all of your business clients. You've got a new email address and all things that go with it. And it's not worth that kind of stress. It depends on why you went to the business one in the first place. Thank you.